What's going on ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to another video. Please step into my classroom and make yourselves at home. Now, if you were one of the diligent students who watched yesterday's video, please compare every single thing that you did for that integrated essay prompt with every single thing that I'm about to do in this video. I hope all of you guys did a wonderful job. Now, if you have not watched yesterday's video, please click the link that's in the description box. And if you have about 25 minutes to spare, try typing that essay as if you were at the real test. It's gonna be very good practice. All right, now, before I show you guys the reading passage again, I want all of you guys to copy the note-taking diagram that's on the reading passage, that's for the reading passage. R is gonna be used for the reading's opinion, and numbers one, two, three are gonna be utilized when you're organizing the reading's first, second, and third reasons, plus the major details. All right, now let's go over to my laptop and look at the reading passage again with a fresh pair of eyes. All right, now let's start reading the passage together. The Word document on the left is the reading passage and the uh, Word document on the right is my sample essay. Now don't forget that you have to read the introduction of the reading passage from the last sentence. Unfortunately, there are myriad problems associated with online pharmacies and it would be in the public's best interest to ban them from existence. So clearly the reading passage is not um, in favor of online pharmacies and believe that they should disappear. So the topic is whether or not online pharmacies are beneficial. And the, reading the reading's um, opinion is that online drugstores are terrible. And the lecturer's opinion is that online pharmacies are good. So let's see how I typed the topic and the reading passage's opinion. Whether or not online pharmacies serve a useful purpose in the 21st century. So I paraphrase the reading, reading passage. The reading's opinion is, drugstores on the internet should be banned as they have a wide array of issues. And I didn't highlight the listening's opinion, but we already know exactly what the professor is going to say. All right, now let's move on to the first body paragraph. One major issue is that many medicines and products sold online do not meet Food and Drug Administration, FDA, guidelines for safe products. Particularly worrisome are the herbal remedies and other untested products that are not considered drugs yet and are being used to treat illnesses. All right, that's all we need. Now let's take a look at my sample essay. Online pharmacies are guilty of providing the masses, the masses mean the public, with medication and treatment that have not been approved by the Food and Drug Administration. The herbal alternatives of remedies and untested commodities are particularly troublesome as they aren't deemed drugs by the FDA. All right, so I used my writing skills to their full potential so that I can receive as many bonus points as possible. So our objective is to not only paraphrase the reading passage, but also to improve the reading passage's sentences through our excellent writing skills. All right, let's move on to the second body paragraph. By purchasing drugs directly from online pharmacies, consumers are bypassing a crucial part of the process. That is, they are not getting consultations from doctors. Many buyers lack important information about their medical conditions. All right, that's all we need. Now let's take a look at what I typed in the second body paragraph. So this entire essay is 458 words or approximately 458 words and it took me about 17 seconds or 17 minutes sorry it took me about 17 minutes to type and proofread this essay that's what this means all right so my sentence online pharmacies harm consumers by enabling them to bypass the process of getting important information through a diagnosis from doctors all right so that's what i typed in my second body paragraph now the second body paragraph of our integrated essay is always going to contain um, the reading's second reason in major detail in a, in a really concise sentence. Um, ideally, you should only write, only make it uh, one sentence. So try to um, compact, try to put the reading's second reason and major detail in one sentence for the second body paragraph, if possible. If not, make it into two sentences. All right, let's move on to the reading's third body paragraph. Consumers typically have no idea about the origins of many drugs and herbal remedies online pharmacies sell. For example, some of them were manufactured in foreign countries where standards of approval differ 
from those in the United States. All right, so the readings um, hinting at the fact that if standards are different from those in America, they are bad. Now let's look at my third body paragraph, the readings reason and major detail. A large number of the drugs and remedies offered online are inferior and pretending to be legitimate medicines due to the fact that some of them were manufactured overseas where standards are dissimilar to those in the States. All right. Now, I hope you guys already noticed that the majority of my sample essay is not highlighted yet, isn't in bold letters. And that's because, as I said before, most of your integrated essay should be composed of the lecture's information. The reading passage does not disappear. So you're given three minutes to read it first and to take notes before the lecture starts, but it does not disappear. So as long as you're not blind, you'll be able to copy literally every single word in the passage. And that's precisely why you need to organize more of the lecture's information in your integrated essay. I think that's pretty logical. All right, so let's move on to the most important part, which is the lecture. Please get ready to take notes. TOEFL IBT practice. Now listen to a lecture on the topic you read about. Online pharmacies may replace corner drugstores in the future, which would be of benefit to, well, all of us. Sadly, current FDA restrictions prevent many Americans from gaining access to the medicines they require. Fortunately, online pharmacies offer these drugs and provide patients with more treatment options at lower prices. Those calling for their abolition are wrong. Online pharmacies are crucial to numerous people. While some drugs sold online aren't FDA approved, this shouldn't deter consumers from buying them. Many of the herbal remedies online pharmacies offer have been used for hundreds of years, especially in Asian countries, and they have strong safety records. Other medicines may come from foreign countries, but they aren't harming the people who use them in their own countries. Take, um, the morning after birth control pill as an example. It has been used safely for many years in France and other European countries, yet it's just now being tested in the US. Nowadays, just getting in to see a doctor seems to take forever. And then there are the expenditures of time and money to get tests done and await the results. Thanks to the internet, Customers now know more about available medicines than ever before, and are therefore competent enough to take them without having to consult a doctor. The internet, after all, is filled with information about all kinds of drugs. Much of it has even been written by doctors and pharmaceutical companies themselves. Another issue to consider is money. Healthcare costs in America are rising every year, and pharmaceutical companies are making billions. Online pharmacies typically sell their drugs at lower prices than hospital pharmacies and corner drugstores. Consumers shouldn't be blamed for seeking cheaper alternatives and refusing to, you know, line the pockets of already wealthy companies and stores. All right, now the professor in this lecture said a ton of information when he was talking about his own opinion. Now that's because in the beginning of the lecture, the professor actually said that online pharmacies are a huge benefit. So I wrote that down. And then after that, he said um, online pharmacies usually offer drugs and treatments at much lower prices than pharmaceutical companies. And then he said something about the topic and the reading's opinion. So in this situation, you're able to write a lecturer's opinion statement that is extremely extensive. So if you have the listening comprehension to take notes like this, please go for it and write a really elaborate lecturer's opinion. All right, so this is what I'm gonna write probably. It might be a little bit different. All right, so online pharmacies are a huge benefit to the public as they offer drugs and treatments at much lower prices than pharmaceutical companies, which means that these uh, drugstores that are online are extremely crucial. So that's that was kind of all over the place, but you can write an, um, a sentence like that for the lecturer's opinion in this circumstance. All right, now the first argument says that um, the fact that some medications offered online are not FDA approved should not deter consumers from buying them because these herbal remedies and alternatives 
have actually been used for hundreds of years and um, have strong safety records in their respective nations. Uh, for example, the morning after birth control pills have been used in France for many years, but they have just started being tested in the States. All right. So uh, what the professor is hinting at is that America might be a few steps behind um, other countries when it comes to alternative treatments and herbal remedies. All right. Now let's look, move on to the second argument. Um, the professor said that patients usually have to spend lots of time just to get a diagnosis from doctors. Also, it costs a, it costs a ton of money to get treatments and medicine um, at hospitals. However, through online pharmacies, um, consumers don't have to wait to get consultations and can even access tons of information written by professional healthcare, um, healthcare individuals or doctors or healthcare professionals and other trustworthy and respectable figures on the web, all right? So the reading passage said that online resources are probably untrustworthy and the uh, lecturer is saying that no, actually they are trustworthy because there are a lot of websites that have been verified and um, kind of proofread by professionals in the uh, medical in industry. All right, now let's move on to the last argument. Healthcare costs are rising every single year in the United States of America. On the other hand, online drugstores typically sell treatments and drugs, medications, at much lower prices than pharmaceutical companies. Uh, needless to say, consumers should not be blamed for seeking cheaper medicine and treatments due to the fact that these pharmaceutical, pharmaceutical companies and a number of doctors are becoming richer and richer uh, by charging unreasonable initial prices for um, medication and treatments. All right, now that we know what I'm gonna type for my sample essay, let's go back to my laptop and read the rest of my sample essay. All right, now let's start by reading the lecturer's opinion in my sample essay. Online pharmacies have the potential to replace corner drugstores because they offer treatment and medicine at lower prices, essentially making them crucial to the public. So what I did was I cleaned up my notes that I wrote on the whiteboard and made them into a uh, more concise sentence that got to the point. If you type corner drugstores, they mean real life drugstores, brick and mortar drugstores, like drugstores that you can actually step your foot into. So that would be the opposite of online, okay? Brick and mortar, corner, they all mean the same thing. All right, now let's move over to the first argument of the lecturer, here it is. The aforementioned medicines shouldn't deter consumers from buying medicines online. So the aforementioned medicines here are gonna be hinting at the herbal alternatives of remedies and untested commodities, all right? Uh, shouldn't deter consumers from buying medicines online. For one, the herbal remedy, remedies sold on online pharmacies have been used for hundreds of years in their respective countries without harming the people taking them, and they have very strong safety records. A good example of this would be the morning after birth control pills, which have been sold and safely used for many years in France, but have just started being tested in the United States. All right, I think that's almost exactly what I ended up saying um, in front of the whiteboard. All right, let's move on to the second argument. Uh, that these days, it takes far too much time and finances to visit a doctor in the hospital. Plus, the expenditures of getting tests done and are quite expensive as well. However, thanks to the internet, people now know more things about medicines and their medical conditions since the web is filled with information about drugs of all shapes and sizes. All right. Now, let's move on to the last argument of the lecture. The validity of the information that online pharmacies provide can be fully trusted as it is usually written by doctors and pharmaceutical companies. Additionally, healthcare costs are rising each and every year, whereas online pharmacies sell most medicines at much lower prices than hospitals and brick and mortar, there it is, brick and mortar pharmacies. 
In other words, most of the opponents of online drugstores are those who want to make hospitals and pharmacies become wealthier and punish consumers for wanting to save money. Okay, so what I ended up doing um, as I was typing the sample essay was I decided to move the um, trustworthy information and resources written by doctors and other respectable pharmaceutical companies. I decided to move that piece of information to the third body paragraph. Now, that's because upon comparing the reading's third body paragraph to the um, to that information, to the uh, second argument of the lecture that I took notes on on the whiteboard, I felt that this information would be more appropriate, would be more suitable, would be more apposite if it were in the third body paragraph of my sample essay. So I decided to put it there. Now, that's something that you're going to have to do from time to time. Um, most of the time, the professor is going to be seeing information in a chronological order, um, in the order that you've read the information in uh, while taking a look at the reading passage. But sometimes the professor can actually say something that should be in the third argument um, in, the, in the last part of the second argument, or it might have sounded like that at least. So if that does happen, you should notice that, okay, this information is a little bit out of place. I should put it in the, uh, the next body paragraph or maybe even sometimes in the first body paragraph. If that does happen, please notice it and uh, make the necessary changes so that your essay doesn't really stray too far from the given topic or the given essay prompt. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you guys enjoyed that video. Uh, the next video is going to be focusing on independent writing, and the topic is going to be this. All right, so please read the topic. Give yourselves 30 minutes to type the essay and see how you do. The next video is going to be showing you guys my sample essay for this exact topic, so please stay tuned. And if the topic was challenging to you, be sure to catch the next video. All right, peace out, guys. Have a wonderful day.